chocolate mousse, coffee with sugar and cream. You know how it is. You go out on a Saturday night, you say to yourself, oh, I'll enjoy myself tonight and try to make up for it tomorrow. But all oh, that tomorrow. Welcome back. Welcome here. If you are new, today I've got a bunch of secrets for you. Did you know that your body likely needs far less food than you're ingesting? And today, we're going to talk about how to make it realize this. This video is all about how to convince your body that it needs less food in a healthy way without harming your health at all. So let's get into this video. Keep in mind that this channel contains videos that can help heal more than 90% of any health, wellness, and body image challenge. So please do hit that subscribe button down below. That really is where the support does come from. Please share this channel because who couldn't use that info? Let's get into this. Number one, hydration. Are you hungry or are you actually just thirsty? Did you know that thirst is one of the last signals that we need some hydration? The hypothalamus in the brain regulates both hunger and thirst signals. If we are not hydrated optimally, those signals get scrambled, leading us to believe genuinely that we need food when we don't. If you find in the moment you're hungry and you don't think logically that you really should be, try drinking a little bit of water. It is best to wait about 15 minutes after ingesting water to eat though. That way you don't mess up the pH balance going on in your stomach for optimal digestion. Another rule of thumb, to maintain optimal hydration, you need to be drinking half of your body weight in ounces of filtered water per day. There is all this crap going around about four liters of water per day, eight glasses of water per day. Yeah, okay, say I'm 120 pounds and there's a 400 pound bodybuilder standing next to me. How does it logically make sense that he and I need to drink the same amount of water? I would likely die and he would likely need some serious hydration. So anyway, really you need a drink of water. Your brain's saying, hey, grab that chocolate bar. Stay optimally hydrated to stay optimally full. Okay, smarter apps. When you get to a restaurant, first thing they ask you is what can I get you to drink? Good evening, my name is Mary. I'll be your server this evening. Would you like to start with the mojito while you're looking at your menus? Oftentimes, an alcoholic beverage is chosen, maybe a pop, maybe something other than water, and then our blood sugar spikes, meaning we want more food. By the time the food gets there, our eyes are way bigger than our stomachs. <laughs> we end up eating a lot more than we really would have been satisfied with originally. Restaurants are not dumb. They do often do this on purpose. Can you imagine that? Then there's that bread basket. Mmm, I love the bread basket. I do enjoy the bread basket in my 80-20 lifestyle. That means 80% I eat optimally healthy, 20% I treat myself. If you are 80% optimally healthy, your body will not notice the 20% insult. So I'm not saying you are not allowed to have any of that bread. What I am saying is order a small salad, order a soup, not a cream-based soup. Have some of that, have a little bit of the bread, otherwise gorging on that bread, white bread is seen as sugar in the body with that alcohol or that pop or whatever is not water that you've ordered to drink. Mm, see what I'm saying here? Smarter apping. That's the smartest thing I've ever heard anyone say about anything. Get enough sleep. Is such a thing even possible? Yes, it is. Sleep is such a kicker with making our body believe that we need more food than it actually does if we are in a sleep deficit. And you know what? Your body is really good at making you feel like you're actually hungry. You can't tell the difference. You won't be able to tell the difference. You need to get a lot of sleep for your hunger and satiation hormone signals to fire properly. Subjects in one sleep study who had less than five hours of sleep per night had increased levels of lipids called endocannabinoids. These molecules are responsible for hedonic eating. That means eating foods because they taste good and give us pleasure. And if we think about the word endocannabinoids, what does that sound like? Yeah. And guess what? They bind to the same receptors as the active ingredient in marijuana. What I'm getting at is lack of sleep 
gives you munchies the same way that pot does. If that's not fair, I really don't know what is. If you really can't sleep or you're not getting optimal sleep, figure out why and try to fix it. If you work shift work, please ask your higher authority for a 21 day cycle. If a 21 day cycle is not available, try your best to just get enough hours at least optimally for these hormones to fire properly, the body does need to be asleep in North America between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. This is because between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., your body is getting all of the physical repair that it needs. From 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., your body is getting all of the mental and emotional repair it needs. There are no other times of day that give you this same repair. Optimal times for napping are 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. That is like that brick wall we all hear about. And this is because we all have a natural hormonal dip at those times. And you don't need to be eating or ingesting caffeine at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. You need a little bit of a rest. Please try to keep naps to 20 minutes maximum. Anything more than 20 minutes and the body goes into a hibernation response. Thus degrading your optimal sleep hormones at the time of day when you actually really need them. Okay, let's talk about how it's often not the chips, but the crunch you're wanting. If you find yourself often craving chips, pretzels, munching away on those crunchy, sugarful, salty, whatever, whether it's sweet or savory, delicious, crunchy snacks, it's actually most likely not the food that you're wanting, but the crunch. Studies have shown that us humans like to pacify emotions like stress, anxiety, nervousness, overwhelm, etc. by eating crunchy things. I don't understand it. Crunch, 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 crunch. Whatever. Just try to have an apple first or some baby carrots or whatever else crunchy that you like. Personally, I have fallen super in love with sugar snap peas. <sighs> sugar snap peas that is a delicious crunchy snack and have a little bit of that before you just automatically head towards those chips pretzels and other crunchy things that maybe aren't so healthy are also way more full of calories and are chemical dense they're processed when it comes to an apple or baby carrots or even sugar snap peas these are called catabolic foods aka negative calorie foods your body uses more calories to digest said foods than what they contain so super win-win on that front keep your cabinets clean by this i don't necessarily mean only clean as in wiped out yes please do that however keep them organized and keep the contents of them clean as well when you're grocery shopping do not go hungry if you do go hungry and even when you don't always always use a list you do not need to be picking up snack foods that are unhealthy for you every single grocery shop those kinds of things should be banished from your usual grocery list. Try not to impulse buy these things. When you have these things around in your house, your brain is gonna wanna eat those. One thing I noticed when I stopped having those things around in my home, all of a sudden, it was super boring to be cooking up you know, extra food to be snacking on and I didn't even need to snack. Either it was boredom or again, it was stress or some such other, maybe not enough sleep. I don't know, but not having these foods in your house seriously helps you when it comes to organization of your cabinets don't keep these things if they are in your house at the forefront at eye level where they're easily grabbable that is just asking for it keep them higher up keep them somewhere else i have a snack cupboard i do that is not a regularly used kitchen cabinet and as well i strive to always be having the healthy versions of treats and snacks that i do like in there so instead of potato chips i buy veggie chips instead of microwave i don't even have a microwave but unhealthy popcorn i buy the pure popcorn this is what it looks like unbelievably delicious i have healthy cookies it's not that difficult and over time i actually found this out pretty quickly these are what your body wants and snacking on the healthy versions of these things negates any future cravings for the unhealthy versions now it's come down to the point where if i eat something that's processed too much 
or sugar laden. It's just too much. Not enjoyable. Now we're gonna come down to brekkie. Breakfast time. Eating a breakfast that is high in simple carbs, I'm talking toast without the healthy fats, like avocado toast, eggs on toast, those are okay, but toast without the healthy fats with jam and honey and stuff, also super delicious, but sets your whole day up in the wrong direction when it comes to your body thinking it needs more food than it actually does. So breakfast like cereal, toast without the healthy fats, bagels, things like that, that is going to spike your insulin, spike your blood sugar, you are going to be craving foods all day long, not necessarily the healthy kind of foods either. Have you ever heard of the sugar train? You know, not so all aboard on that one. So instead of having a bagel or some toast and then all of a sudden next thing you know, you're chugging down a frappa, wappa, whatever it is, blended sugar, start your day with healthy fats and tons of protein. According to a study by the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, will completely curb your cravings for high fat or high sugar foods later on in the day. So eating breakfast full of things like eggs, Greek yogurt, other healthy protein and healthy fats, avocados are awesome, and even some oats are okay. Nut butters. This will banish cravings later in the day and balance out the hormones ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is what says, get food, we're hungry, we need to eat. Leptin is our friendly little friend that says, leave food alone, we've had enough food, we are satiated. To keep those balanced, please do have a breakfast with proteins and fats. If I want cereal, I am definitely going to be drizzling that with a little bit of nut butter. I use natural almond butter or natural peanut butter. If I am having toast, I am having avocado or eggs on it. If I'm having a craving for oatmeal, I am putting nut butters in it. You can cook an egg up into oatmeal as the oatmeal is cooking. It disappears. We can do anything now that scientists have invented magic. Healthy fats, healthy protein, no more cravings. I am so full for so many hours, I sometimes have to remind myself it's time for lunch. For whatever it's worth, I'm here to tell you that it is possible. The last one is so important. Ron, are you paying attention? Save the most important for last. Pay attention. Be mindful. Mindful eating is so, so important. So how much are you eating? Do you even know? Pay attention to what, when, and most importantly, why you're eating when you get that impulse to grab and eat a food. This way, you'll be able to better tell if you are eating out of natural hunger or if you're just eating out of boredom, stress, overwhelm, and the like. I find oftentimes I get super hungry if I'm about to complete a task that I don't really want to do. Think about that. Mm -hmm. It is that lack in mindfulness that leads our body to believe it actually needs more food than it really does. In this day and age, it's not like everything's not working against us the way portion sizes are. Are you kidding? Look at the difference in portion sizes from now to back to the 1950s. What? They were all satiated and we have also working against us alcohol, readily available processed foods, added sugars, all of the like. That's not fair. Remember, a clean kitchen, as in the food inside it, leads to clean eating. If you get an impulse to eat and you're not quite sure, place your hand on your belly, breathe into yourself so much that your hand actually is pushed outward by your belly. Take 10 deep breaths like that and when you're done, you'll better be able to tell if you really do need that food or not. And if you do, go ahead and eat it because food is crazy enjoyable. This is talking about the healthy amounts of food that we actually need. Not to mention, breathing like that, in a moment like that, or anywhere, anytime, supplies the brain with more oxygen and completely relaxes the nervous system. That is lovely at any point in anyone's day, and it also will leave you calmer and better able to make optimal choices, especially with food. So that is all of the secrets I've got for you today. Please do check out the other videos on this channel. This channel is jam-packed with secrets about how to keep yourself healthy, how to overcome health, wellness, and body image challenges, how to lose weight. Did you see 
the memo about this? Check those out. Please do hit that little bell notification icon down below if you would like notifications of each time I post a new video. If you thought this video was helpful or informative at all, please do give it a little thumbs up by clicking the thumbs up icon down there. That really does help support me and my channel, and it lets me know to keep producing content like this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas for future content, please do comment that below and I would be happy to check that out or you can send me a message. I have linked my information down below if you want to know a little bit more about me. And until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life. Have super amounts of fun eating when you're genuinely hungry and eating what you want. Just make sure that you're working with yourself and not against yourself. Until next time, see ya.